Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And I just realized I forgot my diamond painting pen. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, February 14th. It is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Let me get my pen very quickly that I'm going to use for today. So I hope you guys are all having a good week and a good day. I am off work again today. Nothing came in. We didn't have anything on the schedule, but sometimes stuff comes in last minute, but nothing did. So just like I do every other time when I have a day off, I feel like it is God's will and that I meant to have that day off. So I try to enjoy it as much as possible. I'm going to try to pick my first symbol so I can just get right into this. What is that symbol? 28. So as you can see, I did do some diamond painting yesterday. I diamond painted for like another two hours. It's hard to see because I have it kind of zoomed in. I have all the black done all the way over. So that's what I always do first. I always do all the black and then I fill in. So once I can get done this section, I only have one small row at the bottom that's about, I want to say two inches wide. So I am, I am the, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was really hoping to have my credenza by the time I went to kit up my next one, which is queen of hearts. But, and I know I said that yesterday. But alas, that was not meant to be. Now, let me do my gratitude list for today before I get into chatting with you guys. So, my gratitude list for today. I'm flipping to it in my journal. I can't believe I have so much of this journal. I have over half of this journal written in. Um, and I'm, I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. So I have five things on the list. Number one is a day off. Like I said, I always enjoy these and I treat it as God's will that it's meant to be. WD-40. I need to write a note. Someone commented and said, WD-40 will take away the squeaking in my chair. I have, I need to write myself a note. Pause for one second. I have a pen and a piece of paper up here. I'm going to write WD-40 and I'll know exactly what that means. I meant to do it this morning when I read the comment and I totally forgot. Because once I get up, like, out of bed, I'm just, you know... Going, 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 getting my house stuff done and all of that. All right, number two, Bill. Um, he's absolutely my favorite person in this world. And I can always bounce ideas off of him. So that's, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute once I get through this list. Number three is the Freedom app. So that's another little story, which I will, again, talk about in a minute. Number four, podcasts. You know, I listened to podcasts yesterday when I diamond painted in the afternoon. And it's nice to listen to podcasts because I don't have to look up at a screen. I can just listen. And so I'm able to go faster, I feel like, because if I'm looking at a good part of a movie or a show, I'm not diamond painting, right? You, you can't be looking in two places at one time. And then number five, I have everything I need. All of my needs are currently met. I have, you know, heat, electricity. So let's talk about the podcast. We'll go back to yesterday when I was diamond painting. You know, believe it or not, I like to lit. I found a podcast, the guy's named Dawson something. And it's about re addiction recovery. I like listening to those podcasts because I've never had to battle 
a drug addiction, but I feel like I have an addictive personality, meaning there's wax right there and it's bugging me. Um, I've always battled with my weight, you know, so a food addiction of sorts where I just overeat. Um, I feel like I've had a spending problem over my adult life, you know, um, buying too much. So there are things that I have battled addiction wise like that in my life and still continue to battle. Um, reading my Bible, trusting God, all of that has helped immensely. And this podcast, I found that the Dawson guy, I don't have my iPad in here. Otherwise I'd look it up. He is faith-based, meaning his podcast deals with all kinds of addictions, people addicted to meth or alcohol or things like that. And I listened to one yesterday and I, I loved it so much because the guy was addicted to meth and he wanted to stop and he felt like he couldn't stop without God's help. So they talked all about it. And I mean, the podcast, the episode was only like 15 minutes, something like that. But at the end of it, the host, this Dawson guy, did this little prayer with him where he could accept Jesus and all of that. I was, I said the prayer with him. I literally said it with him because he had the guy repeat after him. It was so wonderful. I, I can't even tell you. And then I listened to, there was another, because there's a, a lot of podcasts on addiction. If you look, I look on the podcast, like there's an option for podcast on my iPad and I just click on that and look. There's another one and I don't remember the name of it either, but this guy talked about he had a sports betting addiction. That was, he said he would go to work and he had a good job. And then at night he would, is that the symbol I'm doing? Yeah, 28. Okay, I just want to make sure. He said he would, his life consisted of work going out to sports betting, drinking to excess, being hung over the next day. And he did this for 15 years. And he said he was married with two young kids. And he said, I was never home for my wife. He said, I'm really surprised that she didn't want to end our marriage before she did. But all of that to say he's recovering. And he said, and I swear my mouth fell open when he said this. He said, I will get up in the morning and I will just thank God for the day before that I didn't smoke, because he also smoked pot, that he didn't smoke, drink, or gamble that day. He said, what I'm grateful for these days is being able to take a shower, having heat in my house, having electricity. And I was like, oh my God, I say that all the time. <laughs> I was like, he said, I don't think enough people are grateful for those kinds of things. He said, just having another day on this earth. And I was like, absolutely. Having that kind of gratitude, I feel like, changes your perspective on a whole lot of things. So, and that guy was very candid. Like these people in these podcasts, they're very candid about their addictions and beating them or not, you know, when you're addicted to something like that, you're always in recovery. I feel like you're never beating it totally. But this guy said his life is completely different now that he doesn't gamble. Um, it's, I love the faith-based ones. So when they talk about stuff like that though, because I'm a firm believer in that for sure. Okay. So Bill, so last night, you know, when he, he, cause he took off yesterday when he has a day off or like it's a Sunday, he has trouble falling asleep usually at night right away to be able to get up for work the next day at 4 15. So last night we were, we had dinner, we were watching TV and he's like, man, I'm never going to be able to fall asleep. I said, well, why don't I just come lay with you in your bed for a little bit and we'll just chat. And if you want to watch a YouTube video or whatever, well, we got to talking about 
me finishing this diamond painting and how I was going to finish it. Because initially, because also yesterday, to backtrack a little bit, I went on like Google to try to search for decorative duct tape. Because my plan was to cover the border around the diamond painting with duct tape and then use the magnetic hanger. And when I went searching, I found a violet colored glitter duct tape that I loved. It was only available at Office Depot. You couldn't order it online. It was only available at Office Depot that was like 45 minutes from me. And I'm just like, what? So I sort of put a pin in that and I told Bill, I said, well, I'm off today. Maybe I'll ride to Michael's and see what I can find in decorative duct tape. So we're laying in bed and we're talking about it. And he says, well, have you thought about just cutting the border off of the diamond painting and just not having anything around it? And I said, yeah, and I've done that. So what I would have to do is cut the sides of it off. And then I would have to measure and cut enough off of the top and bottom for the width of the frame, because obviously the magnetic frame needs something to hold on to. And I said, if I go that route, which I might, I said, what I'll do is I'll probably seal the very edge, like the row that goes all the way around at the very edge when I go to cut it, just to make sure none of the diamonds are going to come off from cutting it, you know, right close to the edge. I've done that before because I framed things um, or put things on artist canvas with washi tape. And I've done that. It does work. You can cut it up to the edge. That's how people do it when they put it on stretcher bars and things like that. So I told him, I said, and I'll use Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. And I even have a video on it. It's really old. I mean, I did it years ago. What I do, because that has glitter in it, so it helps to keep the diamonds shiny and glittery and all that. What I do is I will dip a small paintbrush in the Mod Podge, then dip that brush in water. Like I have a mug of water next to me to kind of dilute it. And so it's easily easy for me to spread it onto the diamond painting. And then you just let it dry. Um, I've never had an issue with it. It I The diamond painting I have in the bathroom downstairs, the Bath Time Mermaid, that whole thing is sealed with Mod Podge Extreme Glitter because when I framed it and hung it up, the diamonds started to slide. Now that is not a diamond art club kit. That is a diamond dots kit. Diamond dots, D-O-T-Z. So yeah, I wound up pulling it off of the frame and sealing the whole thing. And the diamonds aren't moving now. I mean, they're, you know, they're cemented on there now. But yeah, I told him, I said, uh, I would seal the very, very edge of the diamond painting. So we talked and then I went downstairs and I said, oh, when I go downstairs, I'm going to look in the Facebook groups because I know there are many posts where people have framed theirs with magnetic frames. And I just wanted to look again at those posts. Well, I forgot <laughs> the night before, you know, I am trying to improve my bedtime routine where I'm not staying up late. I'm not watching TV. I'm not playing on my iPad on all these things till all hours of the night. I mean, there were some nights I was awake until midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I got to get up from work the next day. Now, so I downloaded this app and I paid for a month of it because I think it was $8.99 for a month. It's called Freedom. What it does is you can set a schedule. It will block your iPad and your phone. I don't know if you can do it on the computer, but it will block your devices from being able to access websites and apps. So I forgot already just in one day that I had put that on there and I set it for 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. the following morning because 8 p.m. is normally when Bill's going to bed. So then I'm, you know, doing my nighttime thing. 
and I'm usually awake at 7 or 7.30 in the morning. So I got in bed, washed my face, did all that kind of stuff. I got in bed and I went to click on Facebook because I was going to look at those posts. And I'm like, why is it not going to Facebook? And I started clicking around and I went, oh, yeah. And I went, you know what? Cool. I was like, this is the exact purpose why I downloaded this app. So luckily the app didn't block. And I think you can even mark off what apps you want. It doesn't block my Kindle app. So I, what I did last night, I read, by the time I got downstairs and washed my face and all that, it was close to nine o'clock. I got in bed. I read for a little bit, like probably almost an hour, and it was lights out by 10 o'clock. I woke up today feeling very rested and feeling very good about myself, meaning that, you know, when I... I am up late watching TV, looking at Facebook, looking at eBay, buying stuff. When I wake up in the morning and I'm tired and I've spent money and that I didn't want to spend necessarily, I don't feel very good about myself. I want to wake up feeling good about myself. So I woke up today, felt pretty good. <laughs> and I said, that is the exact purpose of that app. So I will link the app down below. You know, there is no shame in having stuff like that and asking for help and in admitting stuff. I have no problem talking about things that I have problems with. I am not nearly a perfect person. Um, I like to think that I have improved myself greatly over these past couple of months as far as my demeanor, my attitude from reading the Bible and trusting God and talking to, you know, Terry and, um, other people about it and talking to you guys about it and writing my gratitude list and all of that. But I am continually a work in progress for sure. Um, I think I will always struggle with spending because I like to have things. <laughs> I like makeup and clothes and shoes and, and you know, I cleaned out my closet um, Mother's Day last year and got rid of so many things and was, I still listen to the Minimalist podcast. It is not an easy thing though to adopt as your lifestyle it really isn't have i cut down on my spending way yes i absolutely have i would buy stuff from amazon every single day just little piddly stuff that when i look around we have way too many things well here's another case in point so um my stepdaughter lost her water bottle she um was taking a water bottle to school and my husband told me bill told me the other day that she lost it well bill and i had bought these big i forget what it's called but it was a pack of like two cups and we bought them at costco months ago never used them they've been sitting on top of the microwave and i said to him tell her she can take one of those cups we buy it and we never use it and so no more. I told him, I said, we're not buying that stuff anymore. When we went to Costco on Saturday, we got out of there spending $50, which is a miracle. But I am just so tired of buying that kind of stuff. It is just such over the long haul. It is such a waste of money when we don't use it. And I, even looking at my coffee mugs, I couldn't tell you the last time I bought a coffee mug. I don't need to ever buy a coffee mug again unless the ones I have break because I literally use the same two mugs every day or every week. So why continually amass that kind, those kinds of things? It's crazy. It really is crazy. Okay, so that was a big, long tangent. I was not planning on talking about all of that, but yeah. And, you know, I haven't paid for a book in a long while. I still keep my Kindle Unlimited subscription, which is $10 a month, because Kirsten Moglin, Frieda McFadden, all their books are on there. And, uh, but like the Mary Kubica book that I'm reading, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I got it from the library. Able to read it on my Kindle. Kindle app. It's amazing. Because that book for Kindle was like $12 or something. That adds up. The $5 here, $10 there, $8 there at the end of the month adds up significantly. 
significantly. Oh, by the way, I need to thank um, Melanie Perriard, and I hope that's how you say your last name. Um, she gave me a super thanks yesterday, so very grateful and thankful for that. So thank you so much, Melanie, for that. Truly appreciate it. Okay. But yeah, I and I meant to actually look at the Facebook groups this morning, but when I got up, I put laundry in, started the dishwasher, made tea. Um, then I sat down to have my first cup of coffee and read the Bible, write my gratitude list. And I did that. When I'm off, I will read the Bible longer. Like I sat for like an hour, I think. And a lot of you um, have commented and said, what's a good Bible? The one I have in love is the Joyce Meyer Everyday Bible. Absolutely love it. Because what I love about it is that she puts her own like interpretation and thoughts in the pages. And I tend to flip to read those because she it's like she's interpreting the Bible for you. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes reading it, it's hard to glean what they're trying to say out of it. And she is well versed in all of that. So yeah, I read um, the book of Numbers today. That's what I was looking at today. I'll just flip randomly. Um, Terry does give me recommendations if I'm having an issue and I've messaged her. She gave me huge recommendations um, a couple months ago. And it helped immensely and really got me started on reading the Bible and, and doing all of that. So the book I'm reading, it's Mary Kubica. Just the nicest couple. Now, I'm just going to give you the synopsis because I don't want to like sit here and talk about, I only have 100 pages left of the book to read, but I don't want to sit here and tell you what's going on because some of you may want to read it, but I can give you the premise. So it's about two couples, Lily and Christian, Nina and Jake. Lily and Nina are school teachers in the same school and they are friends. So just by association, the husbands are acquaintances because they've had them over for dinner and they've gone to school functions and things like that. Nina's husband, Jake, is a neurosurgeon. He winds up being a missing person the day after they have an argument. Lily's husband, Christian, I forget what he does, but he has like a pretty decent job too. It's not a neurosurgeon. But what winds up happening, holy moly, and there has to be more to it. There, Mary Kubica, I've read every single one of her books. There's always a twist and a turn. I'm waiting for it because, I mean, I only have 100 pages left to read of it, so... But it is told in alternating perspectives of Nina, so Jake's wife, the guy that's missing, and Christian, um, Lily's husband. So that's the whole book. They're told in alternating perspectives. And yeah, cannot wait to see what happens there. And I tend to go look, like when I start reading a book, I might go to Amazon and look at the reviews. I glanced, just glanced, and one person was like, this was not her best. But you know what? I totally take that at face value because it's just like when someone um, tells me they saw a movie and they didn't like it. I got to see it for myself. I don't take any of that into consideration. Uh, I'm going to form my own opinion. And the one movie that really comes to mind is Bird Box with Sandra Bullock. That was on Netflix. This was years ago. Everyone was watching this movie. And I would just refused. I was like, I don't know. Finally, like a month or two after everyone watched it, and a lot of people hated it, I watched it. I liked it. I liked it very much. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I came in on Game of Thrones when it was in the fifth season. People kept telling me, watch this show, watch this show. No. <laughs> I'm very glad I did, though, because I loved it. 
um, but I don't like to follow the masses per se, right? Oh, and can I, I'm going to tell you a little pet peeve of mine. And again, this is no judgment, no shame on anybody else. I don't know about you, but I am so tired in the needlework industry of the limited edition I only have five of these. I'm going to charge $300 for it. You don't know what's in it, so you might hate it. I am so over the limited edition stuff that makes people have FOMO and that you have to buy it right then. That is just my opinion. I refuse to buy things like that. I had bought two like limited edition things last year. Never talked about them on the channel because I didn't like anything I had in them. And I, I'm not going to come on here and bash somebody. If you don't see me talk about it, it's because I didn't really like it. Um, and that's just me. There are plenty of other people that like that kind of stuff. I just, I went through my patterns the other day. I have so many and that was even after cleaning out and giving away and selling some nashville needlework market is coming up in march i haven't seen anything i want to purchase which i'm perfectly fine with i do want to stitch i haven't stitched in a couple days i do want to stitch a carolyn manning design though on perforated paper However, it has to be one of the ones that has like the smaller ones because even on 18 count, the big ones would be 10 and a half by 10 and a half. And my paper is only nine and a half wide. So I wouldn't be able to do that. There are plenty of her patterns though that are, um, that have like the smaller ones and they wind up working out to like a four and a half by four and a half square. But I have so many patterns that I want to stitch and stuff. And it's just, it's crazy to just keep amassing. Do you know what I mean? Now, diamond painting kits are a different story because those truly do become limited edition, especially if it's Diamond Art Club. And uh, you can miss out on the ones that you really, really like. And I like to... And I know I've said this before. I like to think of it as a retirement investment. Like somebody had said that on a Facebook group where, you know, when Bill retires and I retire, we are most definitely going to have to cut our spending. Bill likes to spend too on his boat, on his guns, on all that stuff. But, you know, when he retires, he's not going to be getting 100% of his pay and when I retire, same thing, like you're going to have to make some adjustments. So if I have, who knows how many kits I'll have amassed by that time. But if I have, let's say a hundred kits, 200 kits, well, dude, I'm set. Like I could go the probably the rest of my life and not ever purchase a kit and still be able to do them because that glue is going to last forever. <laughs> But yeah, enjoying the book very much. I will usually read my Bible, write my gratitude list. And then when I have breakfast, I will read some of my book. And that's what I did this morning. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I mean, this video is half hour. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? Talk about the diamond painting. So excited. Oh, I did buy a diamond painting yesterday. Here I talk about not trying to spend money. I have hemmed and hauled about getting the Hannah Lynn diamond painting from Diamond Art Club called Willow. It is a square diamond painting, but it's discontinued on the site. You can't get it anymore from them. So I went on, and I the reason why I... um decided I wanted it was someone had finished it and it looked amazing and I love the colors in it and I said you know what let me just put a search in DAC fans and see if anybody has it well somebody did and they were only selling it for $25 so I 
So I bought it. With shipping, it was $34. And she's going to ship it out today, I think. So I was like, awesome. And there's another one that I've hemmed and hauled about wanting to get. Again, another one that's discontinued. Um, Ladybug Love. And in light of Valentine's Day, it made me think of it because I know Stephanie Meyer, she did it or she's working on it now. And somebody else completed it and it looked really cool. I love the colors, the reds and the pinks and all that. But I was like, no, I really don't want to go searching for it because people were charging, somebody was charging like $100 for it. No way. The most expensive kit that I've purchased, wait a minute, let me get this one, eight. The most expensive kit I purchased was Rainbow Power, Rainbow Flower Power, because that was $75. It's giant, by the way. Um, but that's the most expensive one that I've purchased. And um, it is that color, right? I just put it down. Eight. Yeah. But yeah, Willow is so pretty if you haven't seen it. And now that I have that Gems Flow app, I'll be able to log it right in there. Now, someone had commented because in the notes section on my Gems Flow app, I put down how many AB diamonds are in it. And yes, you can put in each uh, listing for a project, you can go through and put in what colors are in the project. I don't need to do that. I just wanted to, like, if you go to the listing on Diamond Art Club for a piece, it will say 56 colors, including four AB diamonds and one electro diamond. I just wanted those details so when I look at it, I can just know how many AB diamonds. I didn't need to know exactly what those colors were. I'll, I'll deal with that when I get to it. And then someone else had commented and talked about, they said, yeah, I saw a couple days ago about using mica powder for gapping. And I'm like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> I mean, Jay did it. And I'm sure a lot of other people have talked about it. I said, but yeah, I talked about it um, just a couple videos ago. And I even put it in the title where I said a new way to come, something about getting rid of gaps in drills. So, I think I need to put some more wax in my pen. But yeah, a lot of you use that Gems Flow app. I love it. I love that it's free, first of all. That is wonderful. Um, you do, it, it does take some time to put all of your stuff in there, but all my stuff is in there now. But yeah, so I'm going to spend the rest of today, because I feel like it's only about noon something like that i am watching my email to see if we have a job for tomorrow because as of right now we're only on the calendar thursday and friday um my stepfather called yesterday last night and invited bill and i to dinner at a japanese steakhouse for Charlize's birthday on friday so uh, we have a job on friday so i'm gonna have to tell everybody look i gotta stop by six o'clock hopefully they'll be done before then and it won't be an issue but whatever I don't finish like if something needs to be finished I can finish it on Saturday morning when I get up because as of right now I'm gonna have most of Saturday to myself because Bill has fishing like I talked about Bill's got a fishing flea market then he's going to help a friend of his do something and then he plays poker as of right now. So he is going to be gone for most of the day. So yeah. But yeah, I'm going to end this, guys. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this paint with me. I enjoy doing them because it gives me a chance to just sit here and chat and actually get done some diamond painting. That, you know, twofold there. I hope you guys all have a great Valentine's Day, however you choose to spend it. Do not feel any shame or embarrassment if you don't do anything for it. Everyone is entitled to celebrate any holiday however they want. And just because, you know, you don't... 
Bill, I'm, I'm, and I'm trying to say that, you know, you should be showing love to your partners or significant others all throughout the year, not just on Valentine's Day. So, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.